Thank you, Chair Mara. It's awesome to be here. Uh, we could all be, be a garnet, as you said, but now we have better things to do. Can I have my slides up, please? Because we have also polls. All right. Okay. Now you should see the first one. Let's see if it works. You know, we in space business, failure is not an option, so I have, hope we have the same here. Okay. Kate Denkhaus. By the way, who knows Kate Denkhaus? That's good, because I would be surprised. It's my grandma. <laughs> and um, this picture was done in 1924. And uh, Katie was growing up in the, 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 next to the company of her father, which was becoming later DPD and Systemgut. So they changed really mobility in terms of parcel services. So she had quite early contact with cars. And uh, after she got married with my grandpa, the police was knocking on the door and said, sorry, we have to arrest you and your wife. And my grandpa said, why? Yeah, because we saw your boss and your wife was driving a car. And he said, yes, that's correct. I don't have a driving license, but my wife does. In the imagination of these police guys, it was not foreseen that a female can drive a car. That was 1925. And my grandma was the first female in Duisburg having a driving license. The lessons learned is, they had no space. They had no space in terms of imagination. And this is what I want to talk about you, because I believe that everybody needs more space. My name is Frank Salzgeber. I'm head of technology transfer program office. It's a very long title. And um, in other words, what I do, I'm the head of the recycling office. What I recycle is not plastic or uh, glass or whatever. I recycle ideas technology, patents. We bring that stuff back to Earth. We use it in things. We support 130 companies this year in 16 incubation centers in 29 locations. And we recycle what we do for our space programs. I'll give you an example of our work, which we have done with BMW some years. I think it was eight, seven years ago, so we can speak about it, because otherwise it would be secret, and I don't want that. This, you see, is it, um, where you see next to the exhaust pipe, this is a heat shield. So you have to shield the heat from the exhaust pipe from the car. Normally, this is done with aluminum shields, 0.8 millimeters thick. And we said, we can do that better, because we have a company making heat shields for our spaceships out of titanium. But the technology is the same. And we made a heat shield not out of aluminium, 0.8 millimeter. We did the same out of steel, 0.1 millimeter. Cheaper, lighter, better. And the colleagues in the innovation management BMW said, great, this is what we need. So this is our job. We bring innovation down. But also we are in logistics. This is the automated transfer vehicle, ATV, or in other terms, this is our space truck. It brings cargo to the International Space Station nearly eight tons, and um, as I said, it's autonomous. It flies to the space station, and then it has to dock via a laser beam. Uh, that's pretty cool, and it becomes part of the grid. It moves the power, and trust me, to dock on the space station is not trivial. Do of one fact, because the space station runs with 28,000 kilometers per hour. And the altitude and the speed are going correlation. That means if you want to dock and you are too quick, you go up. If you slow down, you go down. And you don't want to have really to break into a space station. It's not good. So we're doing that pretty good. We're bringing cargo. We're bringing food. We're bringing water to the astronauts. And here are the last five minutes you see with the docking mechanism. And we boost the space station, which is just 400 kilometers above us. And when you have a clear night, Google, see the ISS, it's the brightest stars you can see. And it's moving very quick over the horizon. So logistics, space station is big. You see the Endeavour shuttle on, on the left side, still docked. This picture is made in May 2011 from our Italian astronaut, or is an international European astronaut with Italian region. We have to be politically correct. Uh, he was going with the Soyuz back to the Earth. And you see on the right side still our space truck uh, connected. Space station on size is one football field. In inside, you have the pressurized volume of roughly one jumbo jet. And trust me, six people, no shower for a half year, no privacy. 
The only thing what they're missing is space. So, remember that. Let's speak about technology, what we have for mobility. Navigation. Since 20 years, we calculate navigation. We go maybe a little step further that we have now deep learning, that we have cameras inside, which see the pictures, okay, that there's a stop sign, we have an internet connection via a SIM card, we have voice recognition, that runs very well. BMW is part of a consortium which bought the best maps in the world, the here platform. They know within 20 minutes if there's a new roundabout, because every car is a sensor. And sorry to say that, the data is not yours. The data is, is the data of the companies. Very clever. But it's not only good to know where you are, also you want to where to go. And if you have autonomous driving, which system you use? GPS, the Russians, or Compass, or the Chinese, or Galileo? Other way around. Who do you think, in terms of nationality or country, would? manipulate the navigation signal for their own purpose, political purpose. The Russians, the Americans, the Chinese, or the Europeans? You don't have to answer, because the Europeans will discuss so long that the crisis is already over. <laughs> so, with other terms, Galileo is the only really trustable signal. So, if I have an autonomous car, sorry, I trust the Galileo signal, nobody else. Navigation telecommunication. This picture I made when I was in South Africa on a, on a, on a tour, on a game launch, and uh, we had a car breakdown in the middle of nowhere. And our guide tried to get a connection. So my, my wife was not very happy, you know, in the middle of nowhere, the guy has no signal. But you don't have to drive to South Africa. Trust me, if you're in Deggendorf and you go to the Bayerischen Wald, you lost signal. Huh? Who was crossing border in Salzburg to Munich recently? Signal lost. If your car depends really on communication to the cloud, you don't want to have a signal loss. That's bad. The only solution you have there is Earth's, this is telecommunication data by satellites. It's one web, what is Google doing? It's a constellation of small satellites in low orbit, giving you 24 hours everywhere in the world internet connection. So the lessons learned, you need more space, do you? And we continue that. This is artificial intelligence. This is the answer. This will come. There is a leading scientist, which is Nick Spornstrom, and he said, we're not there yet. And he made a survey, asked the leading scientist in that respect. And he said, what, when we have a 50% probability to achieve human level of machine intelligence, so when machines really can do the job of a normal, not a genius, a normal person, a human being. And the answer was 2050. But still, it will not work without the communication. And these big computers, trust me, they need space. They need big space and power. Earth observation. Our cars have cameras. We know maybe with connected cars what is going in 100 meter, 50 meter, but we do not know what's going in one kilometer, 50 kilometers, 100 meters. With the new satellite constellations we're building up, we know exactly what's going on, what the weather is there. We know when there's a flooding. We know when the bridge is moved by three millimeters. So we are the eyes and ears with the space segment for autonomous driving. And the answer is, you can guess it, you need more space. Gotcha. OK, let's see what we have in terms of assistance, autonomous driving. When you see autonomous driving, what does it mean? I don't drive. So it's a car driving, not me. Yeah. Maybe off-road I want to drive if I have a road store or a cool sports car, but the rest I want that the car is driving. So, question. Can we go to the voting? Can we put that online? What do you expect about driving? What autonomous driving really means for you? We put some indications which will explain a little bit later. I don't have a mobile phone, I don't see the answers, I'm sorry. The best thing is with the grandma, I like really that. So, but no, no, not influencing at all. I give you 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, yes. Um, my wife would like the sports one, you know? Amazing how much time you gain. So the idea is autonomous means I don't drive. 
And I give you some examples later. Jeremiah, it should be continue. Good. I'm looking to my guide. All right. Would that be cool? It was not on the list, huh? Uh, why you drive your car to the garage? Sorry, waiting for, for a person giving me some forms that sucks. Why the car is not driving alone to the garage and comes back during working? Don't waste your time. I still have to wait for the answers, eh? Uh, I think this is hacked. Yeah, not, not a secure space connection. Okay, then we keep it with the service. So our computer normally would autonomous drive to the computer shop, get repaired, and it would be back here in time. Anyhow, so that would be cool. I would love to have that. Um, who's using, by the way, um, this service, Drive Now? Who's using that? Well, who likes the pickup function of Drive Now? Yeah, you can't because there's none. Um, <laughs> I like Drive Now, but what really I don't like, and this I did three times today when I do is Drive Now. I have to walk to the car, you know, find a car, even when it's five minutes, five time minutes of my life which I could spend in the beer garden. So, and the same is finding a parking spot, even when it's for free, it's difficult in Munich. So it wouldn't be cool that you have a button and the car is parking itself. This is autonomous driving. So that means finding a parking lot is not an issue anymore. So it means I go to the airport and my car drives back. You don't have to ask a brother, mother, friends anymore, no, no favorites done. You go to Berlin for a week vacation and your car will follow you. This is autonomous driving. And not that I sit and see a car driving. Sorry, that's not in my interest. BMW this week bought a share in the company Park Mobile. And one of our startups we support, Park B, has also a share in that. So, it means also no damages anymore on the parking lot. You come back and it's damaged. So I think that's pretty cool. 3,475 victims. People died last year in Germany by car accidents. That's too much. 2.5 million accidents reported. And these are only the accidents reported by police. Autonomous driving will cut it easily in half. The insurance for autonomous car will be much cheaper than somebody like me driving it. It's very easy. Our brain works at 20 hertz. So it means 200 times per second. The neurons progress with a speed of 100 meters per second. That's not good. Computers working at 2 gigahertz and at the speed of light. They are much better in detecting issues and break. And the best part is this. You go to Oktoberfest having four months of beer and your car drives you home and police will not stop you saying, well done. I like that. So we will have more or less traffic? Most probably not, but we will have no traffic jams anymore. We will use the grid of our highways much, much better. And, as I said, it will mobilize a population of old people who are maybe not really ready or would like to drive anymore, you know? I'm becoming 15 in three years, so I have to calculate that autonomous driving is there when I'm old and not able to drive anymore. This will solve our problem. But also for cargo, 76% of cargo is transported by lorries here in Germany, and I think they also need more space. It will go on to shipping. Why building the ships around people? Why not building the ships around the cargo? And the people in Rolls Royce in Norway working already on that. 90% of the world trade is done by shipping. It's a 400 billion uh, industry. So this will come. And the people say, it's similar like aviation. We had four people in a cockpit, four engines. Today we have two and two engines. And you work with redundant systems, what like we do in space. And if you understand that, you will get more space. All right, we have another question. All right, can we have it online? By when you believe that we have self-driving cars so that we really can use it? Interesting to see. To 20, to 25, to 30, to 40. We'll leave that a little bit on. 
So I, I, have, I had water ready because, as I said, when I'm 90, uh, this has to work, yeah? All right. Pretty good. So we are... It will be like the Grexit between 220 and 225. Excellent. But we still think two-dimensional. That's the only limitation we have. And this we also do in education. We educate our students for the industry of the last century. And the world is not 2D, the world is three-dimensional. But it's not my talk, that is the talk of Lilium, one of the companies we're supporting. And I want to close with my presentation with a nice picture. When you think about the future and you design the future, you will come to the point where we will say you need more space. And then I would be very delighted and happy if you contact me and my team or my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you.